So uh, my background um, is fairly eclectic. I, I uh, was a Green Beret um, back in my early days, came right out of high school and, and joined a special operations group. Uh, I learned was thinking way outside of the box and seeing trends early. And then of course there's the leadership and, and so forth. Um, I then started an interactive multimedia company back in the 80s. Uh, John McAfee of McAfee Antivirus was one of my uh, first investors. And that was kind of my first exposure to high tech and cutting edge high tech. We were the first ones to show, at the time it was called Comdex, um, you know, back in the, in the mid 80s. So I, I ended up at Avery Dennison um, working for the CEO doing basically uh, new product development and technology arbitrage where I was looking for disruptive uh, types of innovations that could be coming out of our divisions. Um, but because they were focused on next quarter and the day-to-day, -day, they were having difficulty getting the traction that they needed. Um, did some various other things. I uh, had a great stint at uh, Kinko's where I ran the computer services section um, across the United States. My team pulled T1 lines into all 800 of the locations uh, back in the day, launched the print to Kinko's app, the e-commerce portion of Kinko's.com. So like early in the web, early into uh, e-commerce. And that tr transitioned eventually quite nicely to my most recent work, which is around TechShop. So I'm the former CEO, co-founder of TechShop, the largest chain of um, um, multiple uh, retail maker spaces. So a maker space is 20,000 square feet, every tool you need to make anything on the planet. And coming out of that experience, what I learned is that we're living in an entirely new environment in that um, people can invent and take, get things to market in ways we've never been able uh, to do before. Um, and along the way, I wrote the book, The Maker Movement Manifesto, and, um, and spent a lot of time speaking to corporations and startups around kind of the nature of innovation and what it means. Yeah, one of, one of the fun things that has resulted from uh, having had the opportunity to launch uh, Tech Shop is that um, my, my heroes have become my friends. Um, and some of my friends have become heroes. So, uh, you know, I know all the hardware accelerators uh, in the United States and most of them internationally. Um, I've had an opportunity to meet many of the cutting edge thought leaders in uh, different domains. I've got lots of friends at Singularity uh, University, um, uh, the Institute for the Future and all of these kind of think tanks. Um, I know a lot of these people personally now, which is nice. It helps with like deal flow and it helps me to stay on the cutting edge of understanding what's important, what's not, what's coming down, you know, in a, in a year, three years and, and five years. And so it's been fun to actually, instead of just listening to the conversation, actually being in the conversation, and on rare occasion actually getting to drive the conversation. It's been, it's been fun. Everything has changed with uh, innovation and entrepreneurship in the last decade. And uh, yes, that's a slight overstatement, but not, not by a lot. I mean, um, I did a stint at uh, HealthNet. It was like the third or fourth largest insurance, health insurance provider, launching a um, software a ASP at the time, or software services benefits portal. We spent $60 million on a combination of hardware, software, and our product pipeline. You could do that entire startup today for maybe a million or $2 million because of AWS. Of course, everybody knows that now. But what a lot of people don't know is the same thing has happened on the hardware side, which represents 90% of the rest of the world. So actually, the world has fundamentally changed. And, um, and Tech Shop was one of the instruments in helping make that change. So for $150 a month with a little bit of training, you now have access to tools that used to cost millions, if not tens of millions of dollars. More importantly, you have access to the knowledge base of the people within the community that are aggregated in these places so that you can shorten your knowledge gap for taking something and getting something out. And then other big changes have happened as well. You now have access to capital in ways that we've never had before with Indiegogo, with Kickstarter, with the Jobs Act in the United States. Um, you've got access to markets in ways we've never had before. Again, when I started out, you had to go through channels. You had to sit down with a buyer. If you were a startup, the buyer didn't want to talk to you. It was this like catch-22 where there's, you couldn't launch because you, didn't, you weren't um, an, an older company. And you know, there's just no way of getting to market. Well, now you have social media. You can actually raise money while going to market on Kickstarter. 
and Indiegogo, and now the channel partner is seeing all of this competition from online or reaching deeper into the innovation ecosystems to pull people forward. So the entire marketing has, has changed. So, you know, access to knowledge to launch has changed. Access to tools to be able to create prototypes has changed. Access to capital to be able to launch has changed. And actually access to markets has changed. So we're living in an, an entirely different reality than when I started out in the 80s and 90s. And it's actually just changed in the last decade.